friends. Don't you dare be sour, because it's me, Johnny of GG, and I am here once again with TEW2016. Oh yes, it's GGW, that is Gibbon Gamers Wrestling, and we are going to continue this Let Us Play. And, oh, this is, this should be a good one, because uh, now two shows into our tenure here at GGW. The last show we did was this one here, GGW Forsaken 2017. Uh, on it, Aaron Poole kicked the show off, which was an average reaction, really. And we also had Dirty Dick Riley defeat Mesa Ryan for the GGW World Championship title. Uh, that was actually a pretty good match, in fairness. That that was, uh, you know, that's the type of thing you'd expect to see in maybe some slightly bigger feds. So we're doing quite well, um, and we are also going to be just continuing on with that success, trying to figure out uh, a new storyline to go forward because obviously we just got rid of Mason Ryan. Also, before I do that, I'll let me just do some plugging for you because right here on YouTube you can find so many things. You've got John Joe with Bad Dream Coma, Broken Sword 5, he, he, he's playing tons of indie games, I can't even remember all of their names, those are the two that stick out to me. You also have Kruger who will be hopefully bringing you some art Survival Evolved at some point in the future. You also have him playing Diablo 3. You have me, me, Johnny of GG, and I am playing Hearts of Iron 4, TW16, and I only recently just kicked off a brand new thing that I'm going to be doing in the interim so that, you know, it's, it's the production time is much less on it, so I can just provide you with more content more frequently and I'm bringing you hot laps on Forza Motorsport 7 or Spa Franco Shop. Now YouTube's only one way you can find Given Gaming, oh there are many 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 more. Yes, you can find us on Mixer which is our new premier streaming service where I streamed the hot lap, I filmed that live and streamed it. Uh, you can also find Diablo 3 being played live by Kruger. And uh, John Joe, he tends he streams all sorts on there as well. And I mean, I don't even need to sell you what John Joe's playing. The fact that John Joe is playing it is a selling point in itself. Anyway, you can also find us on Facebook, which is, I think, the best way to follow us. If you ask me my humble opinion, which isn't really that humble because I don't actually do humbleness, but in that opinion, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> what kind of bollocks was that? Anyway, Facebook is the best way to follow us because you have news, reviews, the original content, the best of what's on YouTube, the best of the live streams. Krug is there pretty much every single day. Uh, so much, there's so much. Um, we also do theme days. We have Fact Fridays where we just go and tell you loads of interesting facts that hopefully you never knew. There's also Music Monday, which is kind of uh, my little thingy majiggy where I'm just uh, highlighting music from video games. Uh, I'm also posting the songs onto YouTube so you can go back through them and listen to them all. And uh, up there, we've had some classics on there so far. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you're bored of me plugging, even though I'm pretty sure I did it very, very well and in a highly entertaining fashion in that time. But now, uh, it's time to continue. Now, just check. Did I get rid of the man known as Mason Ryan. Also, what popularity do we have? Still only one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, right, let's take a look. Did I get rid of Mason Ryan? Yes, I did. Good. Right, I don't have to do that here. I also brought in Erica Sell because she was a cheaper announcer than the one we were using. Um, in fact, she's even cheaper than the one I'm using on my solo play, so I might have to bring her in. Also, I have been doing a solo play on this, and I've worked out a few things. Um, the things that I've worked out is we're going to have to roughly get to around size around seven or eight before we can start making profit on the shows, um, just because our ticket sales won't be there. But hopefully, I can do it sooner this time because the industry in the, in that game has fallen uh, substantially, uh, and uh, I'm not actually increasing my ticket sales that much, even though my popularity in the UK is is on its way up. But first, before we continue going forward and reading off the highlights of other people's shows, we need to redo a storyline because as you can see, oh wait, the power struggle thing is still there, but it's not got great stuff. The top last thing is also fairly poor, um, so I may have to do something there. Um, no, I think we'll have to just, we'll just redo this because, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do a huge amount with that. Um, 
I love the fact that the weather. Oh, that's just terrible, right? Let's just give it to that, and let's just do a new one. Um, and it's going to be called. It's it's called a new dawn. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's called a new dawn. Uh, it's going to have Dirty Dick Riley because he's the champ. It's also going to have his Daniston, Mr. Walsh. It's also going to feature PJ Jones. Uh, I think that's two faces and a heel, wasn't it? So we're going to need another heel. Um, did Luke Phoenix go heel? I think I brought Luke Phoenix in as a heel, didn't I? Didn't I? Did I? Or did I not? Um, I think I did, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just going to check that, actually, because I think I wanted him as a face, but I brought him in as a... Yes, I did. Okay, that's good. So we can utilise Luke Phoenix, who is fighting the man who are going to bring their fire, but they're going to fall where they stand. Um, oh yeah, that's the other thing I need to do, is schedule a event for this month. So we've got Big Birthday Bonanza, we've got Forsaken, so it's going to be an hour long because we can't afford to do anything else. It's going to have to be our Sunday work quite well actually, we had access to pretty much all of our workers. Sunday 4th and yes, June is the new month. Uh, what? Let's just... Black and white, no. Ego has landed, no. Rivals collide, no. Maybe if we do a brand split or something like that, that would be a decent name. Shell, no! That's terrible. Masters of War, black and white, downfall. Oh, well, that's that's an okay name. I like that one. Let's go with downfall. Um, there we go. So we got GGW downfall now, and that's going to be in 27 days' time. Out of interest, what's the ad revenue expected to be? Eighty-nine dollars. Oh, oh. Anyway, we're gonna have to build ourselves up so let's continue on we've got a show coming up I'm not gonna bother with the advanced booking because we all saw what effect on ticket sales that had which is nothing uh, uh, so let's go uh, well surprise surprise New Japan are running a show and they had 6,942 people there to witness it live with a 78 show rating so not particularly good for them Minoru Suzuki defeated Tomohiro Ishii to retain the IWGP Intercontinental title and that did a 77 rating. So yeah, that was a fair bit of a balls up from them. Uh, all stardom, obviously we have interest there. And they had 669 people in attendance for a 69 show rating and, and the main event, Io Shirai defeated Kari Hojo to retain the World of Stardom title for an 83 rating. Um, having seen matches that those two put on in real life, that's probably fairly on fairly on the money for what they would actually do, considering their current star rating in terms of popularity. So, but there we go. That's a good show for stardom. Uh, what else do we have? We have WWE Raw, which had 10,555 people in attendance at the Cajun Dome, and it was an 83 rated show. And in the main event, Roman Reigns defeated Chris Jericho by, with an 89 rating. So, well, that's actually quite good for them. Top show out of the main players, that's for sure. Some of you may have noticed this week that I am, uh, for this episode, not this week, this episode, that I am much more energetic in this one. Well, the good news there is that I'm no longer feeling ill and I feel, yeah, fully back to where I should be. Um, right, so let's just take a look at the shows. We have... No, oh, let's take a look at House of Hardcore. Why not? Bully Ray defeated Marty Skull for a 66 rating in the main event, which was 51 overall, and 160 people in attendance. That's going to be a very expensive show for that many people, but there we go. Um, all at stardom! And it was a TV show with 37,000 viewers on Vimeo. And in the main event, Kairi Hojo defeated Mayu Iwatani, Blue Nikita and Kaylee Ray to retain the Wonder of Stardom title for a 69 rating, 64 is the overall, 2,654 people in attendance. Which is very good actually, that, sh that, that may actually be quite good. Because in my single player game, Stardom have gone out of business. So uh, we're going to have to... Might want to keep an eye on them actually, because they might be end, might be losing money. NXT, 
Uh, 3,335 people in attendance for a 63 show rating. Drew Galloway defeated Johnny Gargano in the main event for a 69. So that was okay. I would have expected a bit better from that, but it was okay. Uh, Smackdown. AJ Styles defeated Sheamus by countout for an 83 rating. Overall, the show did a 73 with 11,430 people in attendance and 33 million people watching on television. So they're doing fine, but so I think they need to actually bring that show rating up a bit. We have mail! Candice LeRae is unhappy with her push and she thinks it should be better. Right, well let's take a look at that then, shall we? And yes, I didn't click on the character screen this time, which is good. I'm learning. Right, yeah, you're currently rated as a mid-carder and it recommends that you be a main event. Wow, okay, there we go. Well, that's... In fairness, I agree with that. You probably ought to be. Uh, how much is she costing per show? $810. It's going to be a little while before I can afford her, though. Why about Kari? She's 820 What if I did a triple threat just one one time? Uh, and it was Kari Hojo versus Candice LeRae versus... Have I even got another heel female? Other than B Priestley, because I don't kind of want. I don't really. No, I don't think I do, because Bobby Tyler's face. I know Nixon Newell's face, and I know Zy Brookside is also face. Ah, that's. But she hasn't debuted, so can she run heel? Not brilliantly. Um, B Priestley is the only good heel I have. I may have to look into bringing in. But then again, I could just hire local, so I could just look at the local talent pool and bring somebody in for one night just to, you know, feed either Cancellor Ray or Kari Hojo up a bit, so uh, may have to look at that. Oh, Impact Wrestling, I hear. Davy Richards defeated Eddie Edwards, so it's a civil war between the walls for a 63 rating. 54 is what they did overall, and two fouls. And 2,503 people were in attendance. Okay, so Ring of Honor. Adam Cole defeated Bully Ray for a 79 rating. 61 was the overall and 3,372 people were in attendance. What's new Pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. New Japan. Not many surprises there. 6,341 people were there to witness this one live with an 85 show rating, so they're back on form. Kenny Omega, Rocky Romero and Bobby Fish defeated Adam Cole, Shibata and Zack Sabre Jr. for an 87 rating. Which is good, but not as good as Hiroshi Tanahashi defeating Togi Makabe for a 91 rating. Now then, what is the big stuff? Let's take a look. No major companies, actually. Well, Lucha Underground. Uh, 2,682 people went to watch this, went to see this one live. It was a 56 show rating, and Hitokiri defeated Rey Mysterio by with a 62 rating. And if I'm not mistaken, Hitokiri is actually Io Shirai. I'm gonna have a look. Just, I can't from the screen, but I will have a look in a minute. We also have mail. Cody Rhodes, I think that's Cody, yeah it is Cody Rhodes, view Cody Rhodes, there it is, there's the answer, I think that's Cody Rhodes, is it? View Cody Rhodes, yes it is. Uh, anyway, he's left RPW due to the loan period ending. Fair enough, wow, actually that must mean that RPW must have done a good rating then if they used Cody. Uh, they didn't, and he defeated Andy Simmons for a 50 rating, well that's pretty poor on their F side of things actually, they should be doing better than that. But I said I was going to check on Hitokiri, Hooch Underground, here we go, let's take a look at the roster, Hitokiri, yes I am correct, it is Ivo I thought it might be, and it is. What is new in the world of wrestling this week? We have New Japan Pro Wrestling running a tour. And it did 6,629 people with an 81 show rating, so bang on their average. Minoru Suzuki defeated Kazuchika Okada for an 81. I thought that would do better, in fairness, but there we go. Ooh, we also have Stalin. Uh, Kairi Hojo, Mayu Iwatani and Hiro Matsumoto defeated Kaori Yonoyama, Hiromi Miroma, uh, and... <laughs> wow, I really fucked that one up. 
and Mako Satamura for a 62 rating. 56 was what they did overall. Uh, yeah, okay, that was... Ooh, 627 people in attendance. Yeah, so not so great that time, in fairness. Could be better. All Extreme Rules, 20,213 people in a sellout at the Izod Centre for an 80 rated show. With Kofi Kingston defeated Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal title. And that did a 79. Um, wow. Okay, so Kofi Kingston is the new WWE Universal Champion. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. Um, this AI likes booking Brock Lesnar to lose, doesn't it? Now, what happened yesterday? New Japan Pro Wrestling with a 3,000 attendance and a sellout. 78 show rating, so not too great. Alex Shelley, Ricochet, and Yoshinobu. Kind of, oh, I've really screwed that one up. I, I, I was doing so well. I was doing so well, and then I messed it all up. Anyway, Alex Shelley, Ricochet, and Yoshinobu Kanamuru, Kanamaru. Oh god damn it! I, I'm going to give up now. I've tried twice. Defeated Tiger Mask W, Ryusuke Taguchi, and Bobby Fish to retain the Never Openweight Six Man Title Championship. The name could keep on going on. It's disappeared off the edge of the screen there. Anyway, it did an 81 rating, so yeah, it wasn't a very good show for them at all. We also have Stardom Masters Tour. Uh, 677 people went to that one with a 64 show rating, and Kari Hojo defeated Mayu Iwatani for a 74. So that was quite a good. In fact, she might have even got the performance of the night there. Let's take a look at the report. No, Mayu did. Well, fair enough. It was that match. WWE Raw. Uh, 9,372 people there, 78 show rating, so not particularly great. Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman defeated The New Day, uh, which was Biggie and Kofi Kingston on this occasion, and 79 show rating, uh, match rating, sorry. We have an all-star Wasteland tour, 31 show rating, 467 people to see it. Johnny Moss defeated Sam Gradwell for a 38. WWE Smackdown. 10,000 people in attendance for a sellout at uh, City Hall Plaza. 75 show rating, so again, not good. Dean Ambrose defeated Braun Strowman, Xavier Woods, and Rusev to retain the WWE Intercontinental title for a 77 rating. Not good. You'd, you'd hope they'd be in the 80s, really, WWE, but they're not. Oh, NXT. Forgot about NXT. 3,299 people went to watch this one live with 57 as the overall. Drew Galloway and Alexander Wolfe defeated Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa aka DIY for a 67. So wow, they were really let down by the other angles there. But such is the way of things. We have Impact Wrestling. 2,402 people in attendance, yet yeah, they wish. 56 show rating. Alberto El Patron and EC3 defeated Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley for a 70 rating. So, ooh, yeah. The undercard really letting them down that time. But there we go, it is Impact Wrestling, so that's probably spot on their average, in fairness. We have NXT TakeOver. 3,129 people in attendance. Yeah, right. Uh, for a 65 show rating, so that's okay. Uh, 57,000 people watched this on the network. I would think it would be a lot more in real life. Anyway, Bobby Roode defeated Hideo Itami to retain the NXT heavyweight title for a 70 rating. Ah, we have Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is running a show. Let's take a look what they did. 3,413 people. That's good. 62, people, 62 show rating, so better than TNA. Marty Skrull defeated Matt Jackson for a 78. Of course, Nick Jackson got injured earlier in the episode, so there we go. But that's good. That's pretty good. We have New Japan. New Japan are on the operating table. Let's take a look. 2,373 in attendance, so not a good attendance for this one. And an 89 show rating, so that was a good show. This one was a good show. Satoshi Kojima, Yuji Nagata, and Togi Makabe defeated Tommy Hiro Ishii. 
uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Cody, I suspect, Rhodes for a 93 show uh, match rating. So that was a good one. Lucha Underground. Let's take a look at that. Please bring it up. Uh, 2,656 people in attendance, so that's good. 59 show rating, that's average. Pentagon Dark defeated Rey Mysterio to retain the Lucha Underground Championship title for a 63. So New Japan is on the go. 3,351 people in attendance for an 84 show rating, which is pretty much closer to their average. Davey Boy Smith Jr. defeated Kazuchika Okada for an 85 rating, and that was pretty good, actually. That was pretty good. And we also have Stardom. Uh, 676 people in attendance. Um, it was a 64 show rating. And Io Shirai defeated Konami to retain the World of Stardom title for a 68. So, that was okay. And Money in the Bank. We have Money in the Bank. Uh, 19,000 people there to see this one. 84 show rating, so that's a bit better. That's more what I'd expect them to be doing. Randy Orton defeated Samoa Joe to retain the WWE Championship title for an 88 rating. So, yeah, that was definitely much more on the mark of what they should be doing. Uh, let's take a look. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, 5,000 people in attendance, so that's a good attendance. Not a good show rating by their standards, that's 78. Alex Shelley, Ricochet and Yoshinobu Kanimaru, a bit better on that one. Versus uh, defeated Will Ospreay, Kushida and Kenny Omega to retain the never openweight six-man tag team titles for a 79 rating. Really wish I'd stop running that match because I can't actually see the end of what I'm supposed to be reading. Anyway, it's a 79 rating, which is not good really for them. Stardom, we're on a road again. 711 people to watch this one, so that's a bit better. 67 show rating, so pretty much right on their target. Io Shirai defeated Blue Nikita, retaining the World of Stardom title for a 76. So that's good. Kari Hojo was also in action, and she defeated Kaori Yano Yanayama. Yonayama, maybe? I'm, no, uh, yeah, probably Kaori Yoni Yonayama. Oh, uh, I'm really failing with this. Uh, it was the 63 rating, so there we go. Um, WWE Raw, 11,287 people were there to see this one for an 84 show rating, which is what I'd expect them to be doing. Kevin Owens defeated Chris Jericho by disqualification for an 88. We have NXT, 3,265 rating for a 66 overall show rating, so that's definitely much better than they have been doing recently. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa defeated Bobby Roode and Zack Sabre, and Z Zack Sabre Jr. in NXT. Uh, I didn't see that news report come up. Um, and that was a 79 rating, so Zack Sabre Jr. paying dividends there. WWE Smackdown. Uh, 10,000 people in attendance. That was a sellout at the City Hall Plaza for a 76 show rating. Ooh, dear, dear, dear. They're having a pretty poor run of form at the moment on Smackdown. Dean Ambrose defeated Bray Wyatt, Big Show and Sami Zayn to retain the WWE Intercontinental title for a 76. Impact Wrestling we're running and we have a 2,814 attendance, 58 show rating so that's right on their average. Lashley defeated Davey Richards, EC3 and Eddie Edwards to retain the TNA World Heavyweight title, 78 rating so that was, that was okay. Okay then, let's take a look what happened this time. Ring of Honor. Uh, 3,581 people there, 64 show rating, so that's that's going to be getting them better than TNA. Bobby Fish defeated Bray, uh, <laughs> Jay Briscoe and Cody Rhodes for an 81, so that's good, that's pretty good. Oh, we have New Japan Pro Wrestling running, let's take a look. 3,809 people in attendance for an 88 show rating, so that was a good one. Z uh, Kenny Omega, Zack Sabre Jr. and Adam Cole defeated Ricochet, Kushida and Alex Shelley for a 92 rating, so that was good. Oh, but we also have Lucha Underground, 2,542 people seeing this one live, 54 show rating. Rey Mysterio defeated Hitokiri for a 58. Uh, they didn't do that well. Maybe it's something to do with their product rating and the way that they set their product up because it does seem as though they didn't do that great. Ah, here we go. Dominion. 37,000 people in attendance and that's a sellout. 80 rating, so... 
could be better, I think. Kazuchiko Kada defeated Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Yoshi Tatsu to retain the IWGP World Heavyweight title for an 80. Yeah, yeah, that could have been better, really. In fact, I would expect better. But, uh, it's okay, it's not going to do them too much damage. Ah, what happened on Sunday then? Let's take a look. <laughs> New Japan. Of course. 4,105 people there to see this one. 74, 74. Oh, that's not good. That's not good for them at all. Um, Minoru Suzuki defeated Yoshitatsu for a, for the 74. So yeah, that that really needed to be better. We also have Stardom. What did they do? 718 people. So that's okay. 56. Oh, that's not so great. Uh, anyway, Hiroyu Matsumoto and Kairi Hojo defeated Io Shirai and Blue Nikita. Excuse me, this is work. We are now only one week away from our show, so let's take a look at what else was going on. New Japan, for 4,105 people and a 74 show rating, so that wasn't very good at all. Minoru Suzuki defeated Yoshi Tatsu for the 74, but that wasn't very good by their standards. Stardom have also run a show, 718 people, so that's slowly going up. 56 show rating though, probably won't do them any favours. Hiroyu Matsumoto and Kari Hojo defeated Io Shirai and Blue Nikita for a 65. Right then, New Japan Pro Wrestling are active and it's 3,893 people for this one. 78 show ratings, so still not great. Katsuyori Shibata defeated Tiger Mask W for a 76. So yeah, really not great at all, but not great. Uh, Stardom. Hiroyu Matsumoto and Konami defeated Kari Hojo and Blue Nikita for a 63 rating. 58 overall, 724 people to watch it. Meh. Again, probably not going to progress them anywhere. The WWE Raw. 11,223 people for a 74 rating. And the main event was complete garbage. The Miz and Braun Strowman defeated The New Day, which was Big E and Kofi Kingston on this occasion, for a 69. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Uh, this game though will improve a lot. Like I'm looking at these attendances, by the way, for these companies as well. Like outside of the edit, and uh, if you look at Haas Parkour, there's just no way they're going to be staying in business, running shows of this extent with only 188, 180 people. So eventually, this will start to slim down a little bit as these companies that are being completely financially suicidal are going to go out of business, um, and that should speed things up a little bit more. Right then. Looks like some big stuff is going on. And it was because we have NXT. Drew Galloway defeated Akam, Alistair Black, and Shinsuke Nakamura. So this is a big one. For 64. Well, that should have been a big one. Uh, 59 was the overall rating, so really not, not great. 3,220 people there watching that. Uh, Smackdown happened as well. Um, 5,000 people, and that was a sellout in Hawaii. For a 79 show rating, Dean Ambrose defeated Enzo Amore and Sheamus to retain the Intercontinental title, and that was an 82. Okay, Impact Wrestling. That's not Impact Wrestling, that's something else. 2,878 people in attendance for a 60 show rating, so they got themselves into the 60s. Alberto El Patron and Cody, I suspect Rhodes, defeated Lashley and Jane Storm for a 79. So that was okay, that was okay, that's going to certainly do them some good. Ooh, Sergeant Slaughter retires. Jimmy Hart retires. Larry Zabisco's just gone. And Tony Guerrero's so also retired, so that's quite a few retirements. All big names, in fairness. Uh, let's take a look then at the shows. Ring of Honor ran. Uh, 2,522 people were there to witness this one live. 63 show ratings, so they're still beating TNA consistently at this point. Will's Prey and Cody, I suspect Rhodes, defeated Motor City Machine Guns for a 78 rating. I, I might just do that every time now. Cody, I suspect Rhodes. Uh, that could just be a little catchphrase of the series. New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
6,932 people for this one. That's that's better attendance. For an 81 show rating, Kazuchika Okada defeated Yoshitatsu for an 80. Um, average show rating, but at least a good attendance. Okay, looks like some big shows on the go. Ah, Progress, that's somebody who I'd moved to Sunday to not go against. 5,146 people there. 52 show rating, so not great. The Origin Banter Edition defeated Team Screw Indie Wrestling for a 61. Uh, Lucha Underground, 2,576 people, 57 show rating, which is more than their average. Pentagon Dark and Chavo Guerrero Jr. defeated Killshot and Evans for a 65. Mm, okay. Um, there was another show I didn't want to go against, but I can't see them there. Oh, ROH, best in the world. This is a pay per view. 5,760 people in attendance, 30,000 buys, a 65 show rating, and the Motor City Machine Guns defeated Will Osprey and Bobby Fish for 76. We also have Mail. The owner position of the Inoki Genome Found Federation is now up for grabs due to the retirement of Antonio Inoki. But no thank you, because that would mean turning our backs on the beloved Gibbon Gamers Wrestling, and I don't want to do that. Here we go, we're ready to rock, let's book it! So, locker room incidents. Oh dear, this probably isn't going to be good. Oh, no it is wonderful. B Priestley and Nixon Yule have really bonded backstage having discovered a shared love of astronomy. So, there you go, if you want a couple of women who can tell you the names of all of the planets, Go and meet B Priestley and Nixon Newell as they will kindly tell you the main difference between Mars and Saturn. Mainly being one is a gas giant and the other one isn't. I wonder if you can work out which one's which. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's right, Mars is the gas giant. Excellent. Right, let's continue on. Oh, how those two would scoff at me before saying such a thing. Um. Right, let's take a look at the tickets. Where are we going to be going? The Sheppy Leisure Centre, which is wasting money if we're going there. Let's go to a generic venue in southern England. God, yeah, so cheatsy doodles. Anyway, 15 fans so are expected, so we're going to be doing better sales than last time at least. Let's take a look then. Let's add an angle. Um, yes, I know what I'm going to do. Let's have an interview. Interview hype. Yes, it's going to be PJ Jones, it's going to be PJ Jones, and he is going to hype up a match with the dirty one, Dick Riley, and guess what, that's going to be the match! I've seen these two wrestle in real life, and they're fucking incredible, so let's, let's go for a half an hour, let's indulge. And let's make it for the World Championship, because that can only be good for us. Dirty Dick Riley and PJ Jones. So PJ gets so PJ gets announced soon. Uh, there we go. We need three more minutes, so I'm just going to go for a freestyle angle where Aaron Paul says goodbye to the fans. Paul, there you are, sir. Let's say entertainment, not scripted, and... That will be our show. PJ Jones is going to hype his match against Dick Riley. They're going to have that match um, for half an hour for the champ for the championship, and Aaron Paul is going to say goodbye to the fans. So GGW downfall. Let's see how this goes. Run it! Run it now! PJ Jones had an interview hyping his upcoming singles match with Dirty Dick Riley. He has debuted his arrogant heel gimmick, initial rating of very good. He improvised well throughout the segment, um, got the angle, got the show off to a strong start, got everything hotter, and the new Dawn storyline has started, and it got a 44 rating in front of 15 people. So uh, we're, we're slowly improving our audience. The match. In a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Dirty Dick Riley defeated PJ Jones in 30 minutes and 11 seconds by pinfall with a super kick! 
Dirty Dick Riley makes defence number one of his GGW World Championship title, which means that Dirty Dick Riley is the first champion in history to successfully defend the title. Um, PJ Jones was really off his game. That's surprising. Very surprising indeed. Adam Bullivant probably could have done a better job putting this match together. Probably could have done, because he's not actually a wrestler. Uh, this match got the crowd hotter. That's good news. PJ Jones managed an in-ring performance of 36, whilst Dick Riley 67. Okay, so Dick Riley really did um, heave that match rating up. Uh, the storyline gained heat, and it was a 55 rating, so that's nice. A freestyle segment called Aaron Paul says goodbye to the fans, featuring Aaron Paul. Uh, apparently he improvised well throughout the segment and it got a 33 rating, so there we go. That was the show. How did we do overall? Okay, we got a 41 rating overall, so... Well, oh, that's okay. At least it's going to improve our popularity, so that's the main thing. Anyway, your show appeared worse because your, produ because your production values are worse than at least one of the rivals. Your show appeared worse because your live event experience level is slightly worse than at least one rival's. Your show appeared worse because your broadcast quality level is worse than at least one rival's. Your show appeared worse because your music production department is slightly worse than at least one rival's. Well, what I have to say to those rivals is, I'm going to be laughing out the side of my face when you go out of business chasing WWE level production, you stupid idiots. But there we go. Uh, we still managed a 41 show rating, so that's good. Let's make a speech as well because some people deserve some praise. Dirty Dick Riley complimented on a good performance. PJ Jones, I, I'd say, uh, I'd given some encouragement. It wasn't his fault. And let's say Eric Cassell given some encouragement. Dick Riley seemed pleased. PJ Jones seemed pleased. Erica Sell also seemed pleased. Duh. Okay, um, so yeah, that was actually a very good show rating for us. Uh, the fact that we're in the 40s is encouraging. Um, it'll also be interesting to see how much money we lost on that one. Um, I doubt it'll be as much as before. New Japan. 6,304 people in attendance for an 82 rating, that's right on the average for them. Uh, Katsuyori Shibata defeated Tiger Mask W with an 83, so that's okay. Um, Stardom also held a show, that's where Kari Hojo was this time. 774 people to see this one with a 60 show rating. Io Shirai and Kari Hojo defeated the Psycho Ward for a 68. So there we go, they did okay. Uh, did we do the worst show? We beat Chikara, we beat Chikara, or Chikara, we were better than Smoky Mountain. Um, we were better than Osaka Pro Wrestling. Not better than W1, but we actually weren't the worst show that day. That's good. Yep, let's take a look at our money. Okay, yeah, 1,642 loss. That has been as high as two grand, I believe. Yeah, it has. We've cut the loss down, losses down by a thousand over the previous month so that is good the ticket sales are continuing to rise sponsorship continuing to rise merchandise no but the miscellaneous as well that helped the fact that we so the miscellaneous being better and the fact that the workers were costing another 500 less is also yeah no that's that's much better the estimated cost yeah we should slowly see that improve as well there we go that was a successful episode um i believe we did pretty well there so if you did like this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe and share because that helps everything out. And we also have a playlist for the previous episodes of Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 so you can see what else has happened. If you thought I was marvellous but TEW isn't quite your thing, there's a playlist of me, me, it's Tony of GG. There is a playlist of me elsewhere as well as playlists of John Joe and Kruger and all of the other Gibbons that work as admins here at Gibbon Gaming. Um, what else can you do? What else can you do? Yes, you can go to Mixer, which is where we'd be streaming live in the future. That's at Gibbon underscore gaming. No, it's not. It's not underscore, is there? No, no. Gibbon Gamers. Um, so that's that's a good thing for you to do. That's great stuff. I plugged this way better at the start of the video, didn't I? 
Yeah, I feel like I did a much better job of this at the beginning. <laughs> and Facebook is the best place to follow us because you have Music Mondays, Fact Fridays, you have news, you have reviews, you have just random blogs, you have highlights from live streams and YouTube. Basically, it's a central hub of excellence for Gibbon Gaming. So if you can follow us there, you really are following us at our very, very best. Uh, that is at Given Gaming, so that is always worth going and taking a look at because you just get so much content. It's wonderful, 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 wonderful stuff. But that does it for this episode of Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. That was downfall, and it did quite well. I think it actually may have got us... No, it hasn't improved our popularity beyond one yet, but it, we're on our way, so that's good news. We are on our way, yeah, and uh, we're making, we're losing less and less money each month. So I'm starting to gain confidence that I'll be able to make this work and that we may eventually get to a national sized company, which would be wonderful. Um, things won't be quite so formulaic once we get there. Um, but since we have Kari Hojo signed to our roster, this is pretty much becoming my standard sign off phrase for all series. For now, I am Chunny of GG, keep gaming and bon voyage!